I should always give the scientists caveat that this is not supposed to suggest that alligators get influenza. This is supposed to uh, illustrate the concept of evolution, uh, where we here have you know the, the primitive animal climbing out of the primordial sloop and moving forward and uh, you know progressing to the human. So it's a standard diagram of evolution, uh, and that's also what influenza does. But influenza itself moves from one species to another a lot. Every time influenza moves from one of those species to another, it's having to evolve. I've been studying the evolution of resistance to Tamiflu and influenza. And when Tamiflu was first developed, they tested to see, was it likely that influenza would become resistant? And the answer that people came up with at that point is no, influenza would not become resistant to Tamiflu because it was really hard for the virus to do that. One thing about viruses is they tend to always surprise us. So 2007, 2008, one of the strains in influenza in humans all of a sudden started to become widely resistant to Tamiflu. A question I was interested in is, why did that happen? What enabled that to happen? So many of the most important infectious diseases, not only influenza, but things like hepatitis C and HIV, are really evolutionary diseases. The reason we haven't been able to cure them is because they're evolving faster than we can <laughs> respond. So we're gonna have to somehow understand where they're gonna go or get a step ahead of them. You know, my hope and my goal is to predict evolution, but realistically, I think that if we can predict some of sort of the currents of evolution and the obstacles and forces that are driving those currents, that'll be a huge uh, success, both from a scientific perspective, but also from a kind of health perspective. Mm -hmm.